on stage in front of a camera in this role, uh, and you're up there, James Thunder early. Are you owning it every time? Or are you just, do you have to bring it every time? Uh, yeah, I'm not owning it every time. I'm, you know, every time I'm going, running to the monitor afterwards and be like, is this, did you, can you keep some of that? Is there anything that you can keep there? You know, because they'll take the, the best stuff, and that's what winds up on the screen. You know, I'm sure the outtakes of this movie are fucking hysterical. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I've been reading a lot, which I probably shouldn't do because I never believe anything I read anyhow. And there's all these words like risk. Eddie Murphy took a risk. And so I'm like, I, I saw, I never, I, I never even thought that you couldn't do something like that. Well, I think it's risky because, you know, I'm known for, you know, people come to see me in comedies, you know, and, and Jamie is known for singing and acting and Beyonce is known for singing and I'm the only one that, you know, I'm coming to this a big, long stretch from, you know, uh, daddy daycare to this. <laughs> I guess I'd look at it like that being risky. But I sang my whole life. I've been singing for years and years. Now, did you, you, you certainly nailed the R&B, though. Do you think you find, is that your niche now? Do you find, because it certainly worked well for you. Are you just uh, like a crooner at heart, or what kind of a singer are you outside I'm of not, <laughs> I don't, I can't, I don't really think of myself as a singer. I'm not, I'm an artist, and, uh, and I could, I go, I, I enjoy doing a bunch of different types of things, but I wouldn't say that I'm a singer or I'm an actor or I'm a co even a comedian. I'm an artist and I just do a bunch of different stuff. Well, what are you singing in the shower? All kinds of shit, you know, right. just basic stuff. The last, the last couple of months I've been singing uh, Carl Carlton's uh, Everlasting Love at the top of my throat in the shower. No, what Hearts you go astray, remember that? Yeah. Well, let's not get into it. Okay. <laughs> now, I've been seeing like promos for this since January, and they're, and they're already hyping it since January. Do you ignore that stuff, or do you just give you butterflies or anything, or, or do you um, still do I, butterflies? Actually, I, I kind of watch the hype. I like to see the hype to see you know, if the studio is getting behind the movie and kind of feel like if there's an anticipation to want to see the movie. I kind of kind of monitor what kind of heat the movie has on it. It never makes me nervous, though, unless you don't see anything. And it's like, hey, this movie's coming out, and we don't see anything. So I don't get nervous when they're all hyped up. Now, I know you've seen this. This is my first experience with Dreamgirls. I didn't see it on Broadway. I know you have a couple times. I saw the original play five times. Now, do you forget that performance and create your own, or are you just trying to be like, a, in, like you know, doing this role to the, you know, a different way? Yeah, you kind of bring what, what you know, you approach it new. Because the play is totally different from a, a movie. So I wasn't uh, trying to borrow from uh, what I had seen. So I... I thoroughly enjoyed the uh, role, and I hope Thank to see you. more like this from you. Yeah, let's see how much more stuff they, they have like that. There's not a lot of Dream Girl stuff floating around. Okay. So you'll just have to settle for Pluto Nash, too. Okay. <laughs> <I'm> just <playing. laughs> just Thank kidding. you. There'll be no Pluto Nash. <laughs>